Hey everyone, it's Amateur, and for today's project for my everyday in December, I'm going to paint this mailbox. Now, this mailbox I got, I don't know if it was last year or the year before that, at Home Goods. I've seen them still. I bought it purposely to repaint it. I just don't, which I typically don't do that. Like, I try to find the colors that I want, but I couldn't find one that was this size, and it's not too big, it's not too small but it's just a horrible paint job like let's be honest you can see it has the engravings for where it's supposed to be painted and it was just painted very haphazardly so i'm going to paint over it and twice actually <laughs> i am going to try to sand off the paint to reveal some of this gold um, paint in here. If not, I'm going to stay, do a little bit of a gilded stain to do it. But what I'm going to use is some Annie Sloan chalk paint. I'm going to use graphite, which is a dark, dark gray. And then I'm going to mix Emperor Silk and Primer Red. One of them is a darker red, one of them is a lighter red. And it's to give me that middle color, almost like an Americana. I wanted an older Americana look. But I'm going to do the graphite first. And of course you want to shake it. I get all of my paints from Bloom here in Las Vegas. They have several stores and also one in Boulder City. I'm over here trying, I've already shaken the cans, but you want to make sure you shake it because there are minerals and whatnot that make it essentially the chalk paint that it is because it's amazing. So I, and you can use regular paints if you want to, but I wanted this to go with the uh, Articor and to kind of have a little bit of that vintage rustic look that I like. And see, this is the dark gray color. And it is, it is, um, I was gonna say something, but it's going to be, like I said, I don't want, I didn't want this bright blue showing up so easily over when I um, sand off the red. So I wanted, I wouldn't mind some of it showing through, but I didn't want a lot of it. So this is gonna be like a quick brushing of this color to give it a darker base. And also like, and when I sand it down, it will have not such a bright blue underneath it. So I'm not doing a full coat. Like I'm not doing a really heavy coat. I'm just literally trying to cover it for sanding purposes. It's like when you take a piece of furniture and you stain it to before you paint it to give it that darker wood color underneath. Like if you start with a pine and you want it to look more like oak, that is what you do. Let's go over here. So this project and this paint takes about 35 minutes to 30 minutes to dry i'm going to put it outside real quick in between coats so this won't be like it it'll be a real time but it'll be it won't have the the drying process inside uh, in between so i'm just getting that and i will be able to clean off my workspace afterwards because you can if you get this it's easy to take it off when it's still wet with a damp cloth um wasn't intending on doing the bottom but let's go ahead just because i want it all to be in the same color um in the same color palette do the whole thing always color your bottoms it just makes it look better. All right, so I did the sides, the back. Now let us do the front. Now I have to be, I'm trying to figure out how I'm going to do this. Okay, here we go. Because I don't want to get paint all over myself. I'm just going to cover it. Like I said, this is just a quick, coat and I do have any Sloan brushes I'm just using this other one that I got from Bloom also because my friend is actually borrowing my smaller brushes and I just have like the big ones and it's just excessive for this smaller project 
because it's much easier. So as you can see, the parts where I may have started might already start to look dry. I live in the desert, so it dries up a little faster. Let me see. And like I said, I just didn't want this heavy, I mean this bright, bright blue showing. So I'm going to go and place this outside so it can get dry faster. And then I'm going to come back in, mix the reds that I want. And we will to get that sweet, sweet Americano red that I am after for this project. So let's go ahead and take this outside for it to dry. Okay, so now it is dry. This is with the layer of graphite. You see it's just a dark gray. Now I'm going to mix half and half of the primer red and the emperor silk. So this is the primer red. It's kind of a darker, one second. The one on the left is primer red and this one is emperor silk. So this one's too dark and this one's too bright. Basically is what we're doing, is what we're mixing. So I'm just gonna take a scoop and try to mix the same amount of both. It really should not take that much. So I'm doing about a half of, I'm doing about a half of the quarter because I'm going to do a nice thick layer and I want to have um, a good coverage. So honestly, I really shouldn't have to really like measure this exactly. I could just pour it out, but I figured why not? I like to make a mess apparently. So let me see if I can scoop this one out quickly without contaminating it as well. All right. So I'm just gonna go ahead and mix this with a spoon or whatever. You can mix it with your hand. You can actually mix it with the brush. I don't want to mix it with the brush because I don't want the brush to hold like a certain color on one and on, on some part of the brush or whatever. So I'm just gonna mix it with a spoon and be right back because I'm gonna go wash off my hands. I didn't think this through apparently. So yeah, I'll be right back. So now I'm just mixing it in and I, like I said, I wanted a, like a rich kind of, not necessarily barn red, but that nice deep Americana kind of, um, Darker red. So the Emperor's Silk is just a little too red and too bright, and the Primer Red is just to me a little dark. So here is, let me show you. So here is the Emperor's Silk. Here is the Primer Red. See the reflection of everything. And here is the combination of both into that darker. Americana kind of red that I've been that I was wanting, and in all honesty, you could probably just go and find a paint that color. But I wanted to use these um, Annie Sloan ones. Let's see, where is my brush? Okay, so let's go ahead and try it on. Turn the back. I can always repaint it. I could always add more. Yes, that's what I wanted. So as you can see, I am sh actually doing a thicker layer this time on um, on the back. In all honesty, we could probably dry brush it like that, which I might. A lot of this is experimenting and figuring out like what it is that you want. I do kind of like that brushing, but at the same time I want good coverage. So I can always, you can always freaking brush thing. You can always go in and sand it out. 
So I'm just going to go ahead and fill it in in most parts, like a nice little thickness. It's okay if I have these little darker spots. I'm not going to try to fill it in because I like it. So this brush is brand new and it keeps leaving damn bristles. So, all right, so let me, oops. Finish that one. Let's go ahead and do the top part. And it's, as you can see, I'm not being super precise. I'm not being super pristine with it, but I am trying to get a half decent coverage. Once I let this dry, I will see if I want it, if I want to do, I probably just should anyway, just do full coats and then I can just go into distressing it. And there are certain parts where I'm just letting that blue actually just come through because I like it. All right. And see, I'm just going through it. And you can probably see the color better with the lighting like on this side right now. But I do want to get a lot of the little corners on some of them, some of the parts because I don't necessarily want it all to look the same way okay so now for the most part it is dry as you can see the color is a little bit different now it is dry uh it was mostly dry and this was a quick cover like honestly this looks really good like that it has a nice little vintage look but i want it to be a little bit richer so i'm going to go ahead and and give it another coat now all I did was just cover up my plastic. This usually takes about 30 minutes to dry the um, the paint, but I, like I said, I hit it with my heat tool. And typically I like to wash my brushes between coats, but I've seen people do this where they wrap it in saran wrap and it basically keeps the brush wet. So now let's go ahead and do a nice coat to kind of even it out and you'll see the difference of the color like i said i do like this color but i could always distress it down to it and it is wet so you'll see that it's a little bit but that's the kind of that's the color that i want that's that's what i want and i'm going to make it look distressed like this i know it doesn't make any sense but <laughs> you can even do it like this like hold on let me see when you can dry brush it to look like this to make it look like you already have a little bit more distressing but like i said i just want a full coat and i will go down from that because i want to see i actually want to see what it looks like completely coated like this so i want that full coat and you already see the difference of the color and like i said i'm not using a lot of paint these brushes pick up a lot of the paint because it's meant to be thick so I'm just giving it a good coverage but still not like loading it a lot if it was wood I could easily do a solid coat a nice thick coat from the beginning but being that it's metal it's a little bit of a trial and error here And just still not digging into deep so far into the, the crevices. I'm going to leave some of it. Like I said, I do plan to distress a little bit. But I wanted to see what so this whole piece looked full on covered with this color. Alright, so welcome back. Now, I was impatient and I let it dry a little bit. And again, I hit it with my tool, my heat tool. And now I'm going to go around and... A little too much paint on that. I'm going to go around and distress it, sand it. Let me just make sure that there's this is all kind of dry so it doesn't. And I still have some of my paint left. I didn't dry my I didn't wash my brush because in case I felt that there were some spots that maybe needed a little bit more um a little bit more of the paint. So at this point I'm able to let me get one of my rags. I can either do a wet distressing 
but I think I'm just gonna go ahead and sand it to give it a more of a of a just a grainier distress. All right. So sometimes when I want to experiment with the piece on how I want to sand it, I'll do underneath. This is just these are just those yellow shop towels that you can get um, from like Walmart or whatever. So this is one way. See how you can get the little distressing by because it, but you have to do this a little bit after it dries. Like you can't wait. It's much easier if you just do it right away because there's still some humidity in it. So there's that. And let me see. I like to use 220 grit sandpaper because that one is one of the, the softer ones. It's one of the finer ones. So we just grab a little piece and do some sanding. You wanna start light. I tend to go in the same direction. And you see how the blue is still showing? Because we're kind of, I'm kind of going really hard on it and sanding down more. But in this one, you see more of the graphite underneath, whereas here you see the blue. So we're going to do some white distressing because that's, I kind of like the way it looks like that. And all you're going to do is just rub it like that. Now, suggest you go in the same kind of direction. Keep in mind, this is metal, hence why it sounds like that. Now, since you're adding moisture, remember that it will you're basically kind of reactivating the paint. So you have to be careful how far how 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 much you do it, how far you go. So I just want just a little bit here and there. I'll do some little gilding on that if it shows too much. There we go. And then just let that dry. And honestly, I tell you to do it and I don't do it. So you want to go in the same direction. To get that paint. And see right here where I did that, I don't like that. That's too much. I'm going to go ahead and just dry brush a little bit of paint in a moment. If you want a finer, just use your finger. A finer distressing, see like that. And, and just take your time because this is what I'm looking for more. When you go slower, take your time. It re reveals layer by layer. I've been going really rough, so it's just going straight down to the blue. And that's not what I want. So let's just go ahead and... See, I want more of that graphite to show. This is like one of the first times I'm doing this, by the way. <laughs> but the good thing is you can always add more paint if you went too far. And I'm using the the roughness of the of the this little washcloth of this rag to 
reveal the paint. I've seen many people just go like, you know, several swipes one way. I just get distracted and I just keep going and going, which I probably shouldn't. All right. All righty. So I ended up finishing it off video because my sister called me and we were just talking and then I just kept on working as I was talking to her. But here is how it ended up. Now, there are a few things that I do not like. Like here I went down to a little gold gilding and I don't really... Care for it. I really don't care for the gold to show now. I just take a little bit of paint, like I literally just dabbed it on, dab it off, and I'm going to slowly just brush it on to cover it. Now I'm gonna let it dry. I'm just gonna go over some areas that maybe I went too far, maybe I went too strong. Like, okay, so he, see here, the blue showing, and this is just a little bit, just not much. You see how easily it changes? It's just a little bit of dry brushing, and it'll just cover it away. Um, I think that's the edges, and it's just really, really dry. So it's, it's, it's going over the color, but it's going over the blue part that I didn't want. Here's this side. So I just want it to look like old now and messed up and i realized i didn't want a lot of the gilding showing through so i'm gonna leave it as is here's a little bit there and you see how it just softly and look i'll show you how much paint is on here there's like barely any so i'm just brushing that and it's covering the little areas that are blue see um let me see where was i okay so you see here it's already starting to look and there's a little too much blue still so i'm basically dusting it <laughs> with a little bit of red and like i said this is how much paint is on there like barely any and it'll just slowly cover it there we go and it's since it's such little paint it takes it doesn't uh, see right here it's a little wet still but it won't take so long to dry uh, yeah, so that is what I, here we go, that's a little one too. I didn't distress that side. Let me see. Eh, obviously, I don't know what I'm doing here. All right. I don't want to put in so much because it'll scrape off the paint, but it'll give it more of that natural look. All right. This is where I'm at. Like I said, I just, a little bit distressing and I just did it with, look, this is my little towel, the piece of towel that I cut off. Now, I don't wash these, I'll just throw this away because I've cut this piece off of a towel, off of a rag that I've already used, like, I don't know how many times. So each time I just cut off a piece and I use it for this. So that way there's no point in me washing it. Doo -doo, if I get this bristle hair off, so. Just a little bit of wiping, just so you can kind of see like what it says, but there we go. Now I can essentially actually go in and do a little bit of buffing with some color, but I really like the way it looks like it's just super messed up, super old. And that's where I'm at. 